The clock read 11.52 p.m. when Darren stepped into the warehouse. The vast, dimly lit expanse stretched out before him, shadows lurking in the rafters, the hum of machinery echoing faintly. He'd been working the night shift for a few months now, earning a little extra cash. The place was eerie enough in the daytime, but by night, the emptiness seemed to consume him. Tonight, he felt an unshakable tension. Perhaps it was the weight of silence pressing in or the odd, inexplicable events of the last few weeks. Tools gone missing, lights flickering on their own, faint whispers that echoed through the halls when he knew he was alone. Darren brushed it off as sleep deprivation or imagination. But tonight, something felt wrong, like a hidden presence was watching, waiting. He made his way through the aisles, his footsteps echoing against the walls. The shadows seemed to stretch as he walked, shapes twisting and dancing at the edge of his vision. He heard a distant metallic clank from the far corner of the warehouse, a sound too deliberate to ignore. He froze, gripping his flashlight tighter. The warehouse was locked up tight. Nobody else should be here. Suppressing a shiver, he called out, Hello? Silence. The sound of a tool falling wasn't uncommon, but this didn't sound like metal hitting concrete. It was muffled, like something softer had taken the brunt of the impact. Against his better judgment, he headed toward the noise, the flashlight casting a narrow beam in front of him. He walked slowly, each step crunching on the cold, dusty concrete floor. As he approached the far end of the warehouse, he noticed something on the ground. It was a large cardboard box, half open, lying just outside a row of stacked pallets. But something else caught his eye. A thin smear of dark liquid trailing from the box toward the back door. His heart thudded in his chest, louder with each beat. Could it be oil? He thought. But as he brought the flashlight closer, the color was unmistakable. Blood. Darren's stomach churned, and he felt the urge to turn and run. But the curiosity, or perhaps a morbid sense of duty, pushed him forward. He bent down, looking at the trail that led further into the darkness. He couldn't bring himself to open the box, fearing what he might find, but, but he continued to follow the faint streak of blood. His footsteps grew quieter, his breathing shallow, and an oppressive weight seemed to fill the air around him. The trail led to an old maintenance closet, one he rarely had reason to enter. The handle felt icy, and he hesitated, but something beyond logic compelled him to push the door open. Inside, his flashlight beam revealed shelves lined with dusty cleaning supplies and old tools. But there was something else. He squinted, and the beam fell on a crumpled figure, sprawled on the floor. The body was contorted, its face turned away, hair matted, and clothes soaked in blood. Darren's blood ran cold. He took a shaky step back, his mind reeling. This couldn't be real. Yet the smell, sharp and metallic, filled his nostrils, forcing him to accept the grisly sight before him. The figure shifted slightly and Darren staggered back. A low, ragged breath escaped its lips, filling the silence with an otherworldly rasp. Just as he regained his balance, he felt a chill pass over him, like someone, or something, had brushed past. The room seemed to grow darker, shadows creeping along the walls, twisting and writhing in unnatural patterns. Darren took a shaky breath and backed out, his body screaming at him to run. But as he turned, the door slammed shut, sealing him inside with the figure on the floor. His heart pounded, each beat echoing in his ears as he hammered on the door. Let me out! Someone, please! He yelled, but his voice felt swallowed by the surrounding darkness. The figure stirred again, its head slowly turning toward him, revealing hollow, vacant eyes and a face twisted in agony. It looked directly at him, and its mouth parted in a silent scream. Darren stumbled back, pressing himself against the door. His mind raced as the figure's broken body began to pull itself toward him, inch by agonizing inch. It moved slowly, with jerky, unnatural movements, dragging itself closer as if driven by an unseen force. The air grew thick, suffocating, and he struggled to breathe. His only escape was the light, the thin, pitiful beam from his flashlight, his sole defense against the encroaching horror. Just as the figure reached his feet, his flashlight flickered, the beam sputtering. He fumbled with it desperately, his hands trembling, his heart racing. In the brief moments of darkness, he felt a cold hand grasp his ankle, the grip unyielding. A scream tore from his throat as he kicked wildly, his flashlight slipping from his grasp and clattering to the floor. The room plunged into darkness. Silence. For a long, agonizing moment, there was nothing but the dark, the stillness absolute. Then, a faint sound, breathing, 
just behind him. The hairs on the back of his neck stood on end. He dared not turn around, knowing that whatever was there was just inches away. Suddenly, the flashlight flickered back on, casting a dim, eerie glow over the room. The figure was gone. The closet was empty, as if nothing had ever been there. Darren staggered back, his legs weak, his breath shallow. He pulled open the door and stumbled out into the warehouse, his mind reeling with terror and confusion. He sprinted toward the exit, his heart pounding in his chest, and slammed the door behind him, locking it tight. He didn't stop until he was outside, the cool night air hitting him like a wave of relief. He leaned against the wall, gasping for breath, his mind struggling to comprehend what he'd seen. The next day, the police found no body, no blood, no evidence of anything unusual. But Darren knew what he'd seen. His co-workers exchanged worried glances as he muttered about the figure, the hand, the cold, uh, unyielding darkness. He never returned to the warehouse, but sometimes late at night, he swore he could still hear that raspy, broken breathing just outside his door. It was supposed to be a routine shift. Kayla had worked at the convenience store off Highway 29 for nearly two years, always the quiet, dependable employee. The place got a fair share of odd visitors and drifters, but Kayla was used to them. Bored truckers, late night wanderers, and the occasional insomniac looking for coffee and a lottery ticket. Tonight though, something felt wrong. A quiet tension hung in the air, thick and unyielding. Around 1.30 a.m., the bell above the door jingled, signaling a new customer. Kayla looked up from her magazine and forced a smile, but her heart stuttered. A man had entered, soaking wet and visibly shaken. His clothes clung to him, covered in mud, and he had a hollow, desperate look in his eyes. He walked up to the counter without a word, his gaze fixed on her, silent and unblinking. Can I help you? Kayla asked, forcing a steady tone. The man didn't respond. He simply reached out, his hand shaking, and placed something on the counter. Kayla glanced down, and her heart skipped a beat. It was a key, a rusty, old-fashioned skeleton key, the kind you might find in, an, in, in an, an antique store. She looked back at him, but his eyes were unfocused, staring somewhere past her. She was about to ask if he was all right when he finally spoke, his voice barely a whisper. You have to hide. He's coming. He knows you're here. Her stomach twisted with unease. Sir, I think you might need some help. He's coming, the man interrupted, louder this time. His eyes finally met hers, full of panic. He backed away, stumbling as he turned toward the door, disappearing into the rain without another word. Kayla leaned over the counter, watching him vanish into the downpour, her mind racing. Before she could fully process what had happened, the bell jingled again. Another man stepped inside. This one was tall, thin, and wore an impeccably tailored black suit, almost too neat for someone out in the rain. His face was unnervingly pale, his eyes a piercing shade of blue that seemed to glow in the fluorescent lights. He stood motionless at the door, staring at her with an intensity that made her skin crawl. The corners of his mouth lifted into a smile, one that didn't reach his eyes. Good evening, he said, his voice smooth, almost musical. I believe a friend of mine just stopped by. Kayla's throat tightened. She forced herself to stay calm, to appear unbothered. Uh, maybe. A lot of people come in. The man tilted his head slightly, never breaking eye contact. He left something with you, didn't he? Her eyes flicked to the skeleton key on the counter, but she quickly shifted her gaze back to him, hoping he hadn't noticed. She could feel her heart pounding, the instinct to run growing stronger by the second. She tried to keep her voice steady. I don't know what you're talking about. The man's smile widened, stretching unnaturally, his eyes never leaving hers. He took a step closer, his footsteps eerily silent on the tiled floor. Lying doesn't suit you, Kayla. Her breath caught. She hadn't told him her name. Hand me the key, he murmured, his voice dripping with a dangerous calm. Against her better judgment, she grabbed the key and held it tightly in her hand. Something inside her screamed not to give it to him. The air seemed to thicken, an overwhelming pressure filling the room, making it hard to breathe. The man's smile faded, his expression darkening. If you don't hand me that key, I'll take it, and I'll make sure you regret it. A deep, primal fear rooted Kayla in place. Before she could think, she turned and bolted toward the back storage room, clutching the key so tightly it dug into her palm. She slammed the door shut, locking it as she tried to catch her breath. She pressed her ear to the door, straining to hear any sound outside. Silence. Then, soft, measured footsteps. 
a faint rhythmic tapping as if someone were dragging their fingers along the door. She backed away, her heart hammering, her mind racing. She looked down at the key, her hands trembling. What had she gotten herself into? The tapping stopped. A voice, barely above a whisper, filtered through the door. Kayla, you can't hide forever. Her gaze darted around the room, searching for any way out. She spotted a small window, just big enough to crawl through. Desperation fueled her as she stacked a few boxes, prying the window open. The cold, wet air hit her as she hoisted herself up, squeezing through the tight space. She dropped down onto the wet asphalt outside, her breaths ragged. She didn't stop to look back. She just ran, sprinting into the darkness. The key still clutched tightly in her hand. Rain soaked her clothes as she stumbled down the road, side of the store fading behind her. But then, in the distance, she heard the steady, relentless sound of footsteps. Kayla ducked into the shadows, her pulse pounding as she looked back. The man in the suit was walking down the road, his pace slow, deliberate, as if he had all the time in the world. His face was still and expressionless, his eyes focused on her even from a distance. With every ounce of strength, she ran, her legs burning, her breaths shallow. She could feel him behind her, his presence pressing against her like a predator closing in on its prey. She turned onto a narrow dirt path, hoping to lose him, but the footsteps never faltered, echoing through the trees. Eventually, she stumbled upon an old, abandoned farmhouse, its windows shattered, the walls covered in ivy. She didn't think twice. She ran inside, slamming the door shut and barricading it with whatever she could find. She crouched in a corner, the key still gripped in her hand, her heart pounding as she listened. For a moment, there was only silence. Then, a faint, rhythmic tapping on the front door. The air grew colder, the shadows darker, pressing in around her. The tapping continued, slow and deliberate, each sound like a nail driven into her sanity. She squeezed her eyes shut, willing herself to wake up from this nightmare. But when she opened them, he was standing in the doorway, the barricade untouched, as if he had simply willed himself inside. The man smiled, his eyes glinting with a predatory gleam. You can run, Kayla, but you'll never escape, not as long as you have that key. Frozen in terror, she backed away, her fingers loosening as the key slipped from her grip. It hit the floor with a metallic clang, and she scrambled back, her eyes locked on him, every instinct screaming at her to flee, to hide, to disappear. But it was too late. He stepped forward, his gaze never wavering, his smile widening as he bent down and picked up the key. The last thing she saw was his cold, empty eyes staring into hers, his voice a whisper in the suffocating darkness, suffocating darkness. Thank you, Kayla. I'll take it from here. It was a cold October night when James took over his friend's shift at the old hospital. The place had been partially shut down for years, only a handful of wards left open, and most of the floors remained locked and abandoned. James figured the shift would be easy, a quiet night, just checking empty hallways and filing some reports. Around midnight, he was in the main corridor when he heard it, the faint sound of humming. It drifted down the hall, low and haunting, like an old lullaby. James frowned, glancing at the closed doors of the empty wards. No one was supposed to be here but him and the skeleton staff. He chalked it up to the building settling, or maybe the heating pipes making some strange noise. But as he walked toward the security desk, the humming followed him. He stopped, waiting to hear if it would fade, but it grew louder, almost closer, like someone was just behind him. James spun around, heart hammering, but the hallway was empty. He laughed nervously, shaking his head. It's just an old building, he muttered to himself. Still, he couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Around 2 a.m., he was patrolling the fourth floor. This part of the hospital had been closed off for years, its rooms emptied, furniture and equipment covered in dust. As he rounded a corner, his flashlight caught something at the far end of the hall. The figure of a child standing in the shadows. The boy was facing away, his small frame barely visible in the dim light. James's throat tightened. He called out, Hey, you're not supposed to be here. Are you lost? The boy didn't move, didn't even seem to hear him. James took a tentative step forward, his pulse quickening. Kid, you okay? As he got closer, he noticed that the boy's clothing looked odd. He was dressed in a faded hospital gown, the kind they hadn't used in years. James felt a chill run down his spine. He was just a few feet away when the boy turned around. 
The child's face was pale, his eyes hollow and dark with deep bruises beneath them. His lips parted and he whispered so softly it was almost inaudible, help me. James's breath caught. What? What's wrong? He managed to ask, his voice barely a whisper. The boy reached out, his small skeletal hand trembling, fingers curling as if reaching for help. He's coming, the boy whispered, his voice raspy like he hadn't spoken in years. James took a step back, his heart pounding. Who's coming? The boy's gaze shifted down the hall, his eyes wide with terror. And then, without a sound, he vanished. Dave. James stumbled back, his hands shaking. His mind raced, trying to rationalize what he'd just seen. But the hallway was empty, as if the child had never been there. Swallowing his fear, he turned to head back to the security desk, trying to push the encounter out of his mind. But deep down, he knew something was terribly wrong. As he reached the elevator, the lights flickered, and the humming started again, louder this time. It was the same haunting melody, echoing through the empty corridors. James frantically pressed the button, but the elevator didn't respond. The door stayed closed, the buttons unlit. He was trapped. Suddenly, the sound of footsteps echoed down the hall. Slow, deliberate footsteps, coming closer and closer. James's blood ran cold as he turned to face the source. At the far end of the hallway stood a man, tall and gaunt, his face obscured in shadow. He wore an old-fashioned doctor's coat, splattered with dark stains. His eyes were hollow, lifeless, but they glinted with a malicious gleam as he stared at James. James took a step back, his heart racing. Who, who are you? The man tilted his head, a twisted smile spreading across his face. He raised a hand, motioning for James to come closer. His fingers were thin and bony, his nails long and discolored. Come with me, the man said, his voice a chilling whisper that seemed to echo through the walls. There are so many waiting for treatment. James backed up, his skin crawling. He turned to run, but the hallway stretched endlessly before him, each step feeling like he was moving in slow motion. The footsteps behind him quickened, relentless, closing the distance. He felt a cold hand grip his shoulder, icy fingers digging into his skin, stopping him in his tracks. He struggled, but his body wouldn't move frozen by some unseen force. Slowly, he turned his head, and there was the man, inches from his face. His breath was cold, smelling of decay. You can't leave, the man whispered, his smile widening. You're a patient now. In a desperate burst of adrenaline, James broke free and sprinted down the hall, finally reaching the stairwell. He bolted down the stairs, his footsteps echoing in the stairwell, the man's cold laughter echoing behind him. When he finally burst through the door into the main lobby, he felt a wave of relief wash over him. But as he looked around, he froze. The lobby was empty, eerily silent. The exit doors were gone, replaced by rows of hospital beds filled with patients, each one staring at him with hollow, unblinking eyes. The boy from the fourth floor lay in one of the beds, his arm reaching out toward James, lips parting to whisper, help us. The humming filled the room again, louder than ever, the sound piercing his mind. James staggered back, his vision blurring, his heart pounding in his chest. He stumbled toward what used to be the exit, but the world seemed to shift around him, the walls closing in, suffocating him. Just before he blacked out, he saw the doctor standing at his side, holding a clipboard. Don't worry, he whispered, his eyes glinting with cruel satisfaction. You're in my care now. James's vision faded, the cold embrace of darkness swallowing him whole. When he woke up, he was lying in a hospital bed, his arms strapped down, the beeping of a heart monitor echoing in his ears. He struggled, his voice hoarse as he called for help, but no one came. And somewhere in the distance, he heard the faint haunting hum of that old lullaby echoing through the endless halls. He was part of the hospital now, trapped in its eternal shadowy grip, just another patient waiting for a treatment that would never come. Marcus had always worked the night shift at the storage facility alone. He liked the quiet, the peace, the isolation. The place was tucked away off a back road, surrounded by tall trees that seemed to swallow the faint light from the building. On most nights, his job was easy. A quick patrol of the rows of storage units, check the cameras, log any activity, and occasionally help a late night customer. But one night, as he sipped his coffee and looked over the empty parking lot, Something on the security monitor caught his eye. On the screen, in front of Unit 101, stood a figure. 
It was hard to make out much detail through the grainy feed, but the person looked wrong. Tall, thin, with limbs that seemed a bit too long, its body obscured by the shadows cast by the dim overhead lights. Marcus frowned. No one was supposed to be here this late, and he hadn't heard any car pull in. He grabbed his flashlight and keys and headed outside, telling himself it was just a curious customer who lost track of time. As he approached Unit 101, he felt a chill creep down his spine. The figure was gone, the space empty and silent. He shined his flashlight down the rows of units, but there was nothing, just an unsettling stillness. Shrugging it off, he returned to the small office, convinced he'd just imagined it. But as he sat down, he glanced at the monitor again, and his stomach dropped. The figure was back, now standing in front of Unit 105, just two doors down from the last spot. And it was closer this time, its face still hidden by shadows, but he could feel it staring directly at the camera, directly at him. Marcus swallowed hard, a cold sweat forming on his brow. He tried to rationalize it. Maybe it was a trick of the cameras, a glitch. But as he watched, the figure raised an arm, extending it toward the camera. Its fingers were impossibly long, almost skeletal, and it waved slowly as if it knew he was watching. He looked away, blinking, but when he glanced back, the screen was blank. The figure was gone. Marcus exhaled a shaky breath and ran his hand over his face, trying to calm his nerves. Hours passed without incident, the monitors remaining blank, the rows silent. He was just beginning to feel foolish when he heard a noise, a faint shuffling sound coming from down the hall. The hair on his neck stood on end. He picked up his flashlight again and crept toward the sound, the silence pressing in around him. As he turned the corner, the noise stopped. He scanned the empty hallway, his flashlight flickering slightly, cast casting long shadows that danced along the walls. Hello? He called out, his voice shaky. Silence. Then, just as he was about to turn back, he heard it, a low, raspy whisper that seemed to come from everywhere at once. Marcus. The voice was soft, almost playful, and it sent a chill straight through him. His hands shook as he gripped the flashlight, his mind racing. No one was supposed to know his name. He hadn't even told anyone he was working tonight. He backed up slowly, his heart pounding. But then, behind him, he heard footsteps. He spun around, his flashlight catching a brief flash of movement, something tall and thin slipping out of sight. Panic gripped him as he stumbled back toward the office, glancing over his shoulder, but there was no one there. He locked himself inside, his hands shaking as he double-checked the doors and scanned the monitors, but the screens showed only static. He stared at the grainy feed, hoping it would flicker back to life, but all he could hear was the soft hum of static filling the room. Then, slowly, the image on one monitor cleared. The figure was back, standing in the hallway just outside his office. Its face was visible now, pale and contorted, eyes black and bottomless, staring straight into the camera with a look of twisted delight. Marcus's heart raced as he watched the figure slowly tilt its head, those black eyes fixed on him. The creature's mouth stretched into a wide, unnatural grin, and it raised a single long finger to its lips in a gesture of silence. Marcus staggered back, nearly tripping over his chair. He turned, desperate for an escape, but he froze. The door, it was open. Just a crack, but enough to feel the icy draft from the hall outside. His pulse thundered as he took a shaky step forward, reaching out to shut it. But before he could reach it, the door swung open, revealing the figure standing right there, just outside the threshold. Its eyes were hollow pits, a darkness that seemed to swallow the light around it. It stretched one long, bony hand toward him, those impossibly long fingers reaching as if inviting him to take its hand. He stumbled back, pressing himself against the wall as the figure took a slow, deliberate step into the office. The lights flickered, and in the brief flashes of darkness, it seemed to grow taller, its limbs stretching, filling the room with its impossible, contorted form. Why are you here? Marcus stammered, barely able to breathe. The figure cocked its head, the grin widening. To keep you company, it whispered, the voice echoing in his mind. The sound was like nails scraping against his skull, making his vision blur. In a final burst of panic, Marcus scrambled for the emergency door, throwing it open and running out into the night. The cold air hit him like a slap and he sprinted down the gravel road, his only goal to get as far from the building as possible. He didn't dare look back, afraid of what he might see. When he finally reached his car, 
he fumbled with his keys, throwing himself inside and locking the doors. He sat there, breathing heavily, watching the building from a safe distance, waiting for any sign of movement. But the facility was dark and still. He stared at the entrance, his mind racing, and just as he began to think he was safe, he saw it. Through the rearview mirror, he caught a glimpse of the figure standing in the distance, watching him. Its face was blurred, distorted, like something out of a nightmare. Its grin stretching wider than humanly possible. Then, slowly, it lifted its hand and waved a small, mocking gesture of farewell. Marcus didn't wait. He started the car, tires screeching as he sped down the road, glancing in the mirror again and again, half expecting to see the figure chasing him. But there was nothing, just the empty road stretching out before him. He didn't return to the facility after that. They never found the creature, the knack, nor any trace of it on the security tapes. But sometimes, late at night, Marcus would wake up in a cold sweat, certain he'd heard that voice, whispering his name, promising that one day it would come back for him.